Hey, I'm Fuchi, and welcome to Tiny Kitchen Big Taste. We're back with an international cuisine collaboration. We're heading all the way over to Japan for a great Japanese dessert called Castella. Now, this is a great Japanese sponge cake. It's very moist, very dense, got a nice light honey flavor, and it pairs perfectly with tea or coffee at the end of a meal. You could also throw a few berries on there, maybe some strawberries and blueberries, and turn it into a nice little July 4th fusion. Domo arigato, Mr. Fuchito. Bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it. Oh. It has been a crazy year. I mean, think about it. When you started 2020, all those great New Year's resolutions that you had. Yeah, where'd they go? And what about the Summer Olympic Games in Japan? Who would have thought that they would have been postponed? Well, do not fret. Even though we can't go to Japan, we can bring some great Japanese cooking back home to the States. And that's thanks to Rock and Rafi over at Rock and Rafi's Home Cooking for rallying the troops and bringing together me and some of our YouTube friends for this great international extravaganza. Now, each one of us is taking a different course of the meal. Rock and Rafi, he's gonna be kicking us off with a great miso soup, and you know Rock and Rafi's home cooking is gonna be good. Next course will be wine and dine with Jeff. Now, Jeff is gonna be making an oyakodon bowl, which is a chicken and egg bowl. And the one thing that I love about Jeff's cooking is you know you're gonna get a great wine paired with it. Next is Sab over at Langham Eats, and she's making everybody's favorite sushi. And I'm gonna put all the links to all their channels and their videos down in the notes below, so go check those out. I will be finishing off the meal with this great Castella, this super simple wagashi, that's a Japanese term for dessert, that is made of just four ingredients, which is why I love it for the tiny kitchen. We've got flour, eggs, sugar, and honey, and that is it. It could not be more simple. The hardest part about it is actually just cutting the parchment paper to fit the pan, and I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do that. So you're gonna get your little wrapping paper skills going, just measure it up so that it fits, and then we'll go ahead and just cut the side here. And then we're gonna measure each corner of the pan, make a little mark there. And there, and there, and there. And essentially what we're gonna do is just cut a little square out. And you don't have to draw it, you can just eyeball it if you want. But we'll cut a square just like this. And then we're gonna do it for all four corners. And once we've got the four squares cut out, we can just go ahead and fold them towards the center. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want the bottom to fit the bottom of the pan. Let's give it a measure. Oh, look at that. It fits perfectly. So I'm just gonna trim off the top here so that we don't have all this extra. And now that it fits, we'll just go ahead and spray the pan. Spread that around. And this will help the parchment paper to stick to the sides. Voila! So now we can make the batter. We are making this cake entirely from scratch, which when you only have four ingredients is pretty darn doable. Now I've broken our eggs into the bowl here. They are room temperature, which is very important because you want them to be able to whip up all nice and fluffy. I'm gonna hit them with the mixer for just a few seconds to get them all nice and scrambled. Next, we'll add our sugar. And we're gonna hit this on high for about five minutes until they're nice and fluffy. All right, look at that. Oh, and look how it's just sort of drizzles out into these great ribbons. Next, we're gonna add our honey. And now I added just a, just a touch of water to this to make the honey all nice and loose so it's not too, too thick. Let's go ahead and pour that in. 
We're gonna hit this with the mixer for just a couple seconds to get it all nice and incorporated. Now we're doing this on low speed. Low speed ahead. Next, we're gonna add our bread flour. Now this is a little bit different than all purpose flour. It's got more protein to it. So when we start mixing it in, it creates those glutinous threads. It's gonna create these little air pockets that uh, make for a nice spongy texture. You do need to use bread flour. If you can't find it at the grocery store though, you can make it out of all purpose flour, a little baking powder and salt. I'll go ahead and throw the recipe down in the notes below. But uh, we're gonna add this just a little bit at a time. And then hit it with the mixer. Just a little bit more. Throw the rest in there. And that is our batter. We can now pour it into our pan. And then we're gonna take our little skewer here and just do a little zigzag pattern back and forth. And all we're doing with this is getting out some of the air bubbles that are in the batter. Pop it just a little bit. You'll see some of the little air bubbles start to come to the top. I'm gonna pop this in a 320 degree oven for about 40 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean and it's nice and golden brown. So we've taken it out of the oven. It's cooled just slightly. We're gonna remove our cake here and then flip it over. And then we'll just take off our parchment paper. And keep that top all nice and golden brown. Don't worry about the sides. Now a little trick in cake making is to add some simple syrup to the top. Now this is just a little bit of honey and some water. We'll go ahead and paint that right on top and that'll drip right into the middle of the cake and keep it all nice and moist. Then I'm gonna take our plastic wrap and just fold it over and tuck it. Fold and tuck, fold and tuck. We're gonna pop this in the refrigerator for 12 hours. I know it sounds like a long time, but it will be well worth the wait. So it's chilled for 12 hours and now we get to slice it up. We're actually gonna remove both the sides like that. So we'll just go ahead and take our bread knife and just slice straight down on both ends. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. Finally, on this side. And this is the best part because you get to taste it. Oh yeah, that's good. It's good. So at this point, we will cut it into one inch slices. And then we'll plate it up. So check this out, Costella. Oh, it's a beautiful cake with that nice golden brown top. Traditionally, it's just served on its own with maybe a side of coffee or tea. But since it's the 4th of July, I couldn't resist. I decided to get all patriotic with some strawberries and blueberries and just a touch of whipped cream. Now, don't forget to check out all our Japanese international collaborators. I'm gonna leave all the information in the notes below. And go get this recipe. It's available on our website. You can also check us out at Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And when you try this recipe, please let us know about it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Until next time, I'm Fuchi reminding you that if I can make Costella in a kitchen this tiny, you can make it in yours. We'll see you next time on Tiny Kitchen, Big Taste. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sayonara! It'll allow those gluten threads to hold little air pockets of, uh, little pockets of air, air pockets. <laughs> and some honey that I've added some, a little bit of hot water. Actually, I haven't done that yet. So